Well, hi there. This is the Horrid King Assassin Bug. And that's not just its common name. That's the name that scientists gave it as well. Pistala Horrida. Pistala being the genus of assassin bugs to which they belong, and Horrida meaning horrid. <laughs> I can tell you this is a horridly awesome bug. Just look at it. For starters, it's huge, almost two inches long. These are the biggest of all the assassin bugs, the kings, if you will. And all assassin bugs are awesome. But if being the biggest wasn't enough, they also decided to be one of, if not the most wickedly horrid looking as well. Their colors are beautiful, though somewhat menacing if you know anything about aposematism. And then there are the spikes. My gosh, look at the spikes on that pronotum. These guys are horrifying and I love them. And we haven't even gotten to what it means to be an assassin bug, but somehow that sounds more menacing than ladybug. And unlike ladybugs, which are beetles and not true bugs, these guys, like all assassin bugs, are true bugs. But what does that mean? Well, it means that they're members of the order Hemiptera. Like beetles, Hemipterans typically have a first pair of wings modified into wing covers, called elytra, that cover and protect the second set of wings when they're not in use. This allows them to both fly and squeeze under things that would destroy the wings of dragonflies, houseflies, butterflies, and the like. But unlike beetles, they have an incomplete metamorphosis, meaning that the juveniles, nymphs, look like the adults, except without any wings. Whereas juvenile beetles, larvae, look nothing like adult beetles. Nymphs also do not pass through a pupal stage like beetles and other insects with complete metamorphosis. And if you didn't get to see them grow up, you can still distinguish them by their mouth parts. Whereas beetles have jaw-like mandibles, the true bugs have piercing sucking mouth parts like these. And while the pinch of beetle jaws is unpleasant, it has nothing on the horrid venom-injecting stab of that vicious harpoon. As a kid, I discovered the horror of hemipteran bites when I was carrying a water strider around in a grocery store. You know, like you do. It was one of the more memorably painful experiences of my life. They just jabbed those piercing, sucking mouth parts right through the palm of my hand and injected some very unpleasant venom. Well, these guys are bigger than a water strider by more than an order of magnitude. Hopefully I don't find out what that would be like today, but stick around just in case. I am going to attempt to handle them. I reckon it would be horrid. So that's what makes them a true bug. But what is an assassin bug? Because you know it's going to be cool. And I would say that the assassin bugs are one of the two most hardcore groups of bugs. The other being the bellostomatid toe biters or water scorpions. They're hardcore and I love them. Let me know if you'd like to see a video about them as well. And the thing is that bellostomatids, like most predatory hemipterans, live in the water. Most terrestrial hemipterans, on the other hand, use their terrifying mouth parts to feed on plants, but not the assassin bugs. Assassin bugs are terrestrial ambush predators that use their horrifying mouth parts to inject a lethal dose of venom that can incapacitate and kill prey larger than the bug itself and then liquefy its insides so that they can be extracted using the sucking ability of those same horrid mouth parts leaving nothing but an empty husk of their prey behind as a sobering reminder of their terrifying capabilities. So is this one, the horrid king of the assassin bugs, a good pet? And is it the best pet insect for you? To figure this out, we will have to give his spiky, ghastly majesty a score based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the horrid king assassin bug a score of two out of five, which is honestly a pretty good score for an animal with as many weapons as this thing has. With most insects, you can handle them pretty safely if you grab them by the shield over their thorax, called the pronotum. Well, if you take a look at the pronotum on these guys, you'll notice that it is covered in giant spikes. Also, I'm really not confident that they do not have the harpoon dexterity to swing around and spear you even if you decide to brave the horrid spikes. As we mentioned earlier, they do inject some nasty venom using those nasty mouth parts. 
I'm not under the impression that it would be life-threatening, but it is reportedly very painful and there just isn't too much information about it. In short, there aren't many places where you can touch them without a risk of a bite, and you don't want that bite. Unless you're William. His recent antics with bullet ants have me thinking that he might want to give it a go. And that video's coming out soon, so if you don't already subscribe and have the little bell clicked, now might be a good time. And also, even if they can't bite you, they can also spray some nasty chemical defense stuff. So that's the damage that they can do to you. Obviously, in a fight, you would still win against a horrid king assassin bug. Being an insect, their size is limited by both their method of breathing and their exoskeleton. You can beat any individual insect on the planet in a fight. And even though this is the largest of all assassin bugs and an impressively large insect, it is still small and could easily be damaged by improper handling. Obviously, you don't want to crush them. You also want to be sure not to damage their tarsal claws when picking them up. Anyway, nothing about handling these guys sounds good. And it's not. If you never handle these bugs, that's a totally reasonable decision. You can still totally enjoy them as pets. But they still get a couple of points here. Why is that? Well, for starters, as unpleasant as that bite would be, it doesn't appear to be medically significant. And second, for as nasty as a bad interaction with these bugs could be, they seem to have a pretty laid back disposition. If you can handle them without restraining them, they're very unlikely to introduce you to any of their weapons. Just because you can be horrid doesn't mean that you have to be. So, uh, let's give it a shot, shall we? I think I'm gonna go for the biggest one, of course. Go big or go home, right, Will? That's right. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty nerve wracking. Those mouth parts are serious. They, they do a lot of chemical detection. They're definitely probably gonna detect the amount of perspiration I've got going on. <laughs> Cause this is pretty scary, man. There you go. Oh. <sighs> Delightful. If you guys have seen any of our videos from the Amazon, you'll notice that I had a rad Clint's Reptiles hat. And that was the only Clint's Reptiles hat in existence anywhere in the world. Well, that is not the case anymore because now you could have your own stinking rad Clint's Reptiles hat and look just as awesome, probably even more awesome than I did down in the Amazon. These are really, really cool and uh, you can check them out down in our spring store. Plus it helps to support the channel. So if you want a rad hat and help support awesome content like this in the future, please check out our store. When it comes to care, we give the Horrid King Assassin Bug a score of five out of five. Really, the only downside is that you do need access to feeder insects, but that isn't too difficult. A diversity of feeders is definitely preferred. Things like crickets, roaches, hornworms, etc., would be great. And I would recommend feeders smaller than your bugs, though they can handle even larger ones. And it's my understanding that they all get together for a family feast when feeding time occurs. And that is morbidly adorable. Again, just variety, as not all insects contain the same nutrients. When it comes to housing, that's really simple. They need a box from which they cannot escape and some sort of surface onto which they can hang. This can come from cork bark, egg crates, toilet paper rolls, really the options are diverse. But this is necessary, especially for nymphs, which will die while molting if they cannot suspend themselves from something. Substrate also gives you a lot of options. Paper will work, but you can also go some sort of dry bioactive substrate. Just be sure it isn't too wet. They don't spend much time on the ground, so make most of your focus on things they can climb upon. As for water, it seems that they may get enough from their prey, but I would offer a very small and shallow water bowl from which they can drink, but not drown. As for heat and light, the heat and light in your house are probably fine. If your home is not climate controlled, then you might need to do something for heat or cooling, but generally, that's not a concern. 
When it comes to hardiness, we give his horrid majesty a score of 5 out of 5. This is an insect that really doesn't require a lot of care in order to survive. If you give them that care, they should live a couple of years. And if you have a colony, they should be reproducing. And while no one individual will live much longer than your average rat, there should always be a few princes and princesses ready to assume the throne whenever their horrid parents move on to that kingdom in the sky. When it comes to availability, we give the Horrid King Assassin Bug a score of 3 out of 5. Ideally, someone near you has a colony of these guys and you can get a few from them. These Horrid Kings and their offspring come to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of those pet shops that is awesome enough to actually carry something like this. I always have fun going to Animal Ark just to see what amazing and unusual things they have for me to see. And you better believe I was excited to see these. But the fact is that they are uncommon to see in pet shops and even expos. Your best chance will be online. For example, I just came back from the Wasatch Reptile Expo this last weekend and I was looking for these guys and I saw none. And there were a lot of people that had some really cool invertebrates. So even expos, no guarantee you'll find these. Your best chance will be online, but I've noticed that they are often sold out online. So they're out there, but you might need to look around for a bit. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Horrid King Assassin Bug a score of 5 out of 5. This is a pretty darn expensive insect. It seems that they go for somewhere between $20 and $50 each, which makes a colony rather spendy. But everything else that you will need is dirt cheap. A 10 gallon aquarium with a lid would make a spectacular enclosure, and that's the cheapest aquarium you can get. Cork bark and bioactive substrate are your most expensive optional supplies, and they don't cost much. Again, you could use egg cartons and paper towels, but these are so cool you really want to display them in all their horrid glory. Build them a kingdom worth showing off. Something like a milk cap for a water bowl, and uh, you know, that's, that's really it. And that is why overall we give the Horrid King Assassin Bug a 5 out of 5 for having an amazing name. And a 4.0 out of 5 as a pet. If what you want is the most hardcore of all bugs, at least all assassin bugs, and why would you be watching this if you don't at least a little, then the Horrid King Assassin Bug might be the perfect pet insect for you. Should I get some for Clint's Reptile Room? I think maybe I should. As always, like and subscribe. And we hope to see you real soon. Those are nice. Aren't they red? Oh my gosh. I want one. I know. I don't wear hats, but I want one. The nice thing is, you know, at least when we have a good bank of videos filmed, is you could trickle them out for quite a while before having to unveil about my death. Before resorting to CGI. Well, I, I just think you find another presenter in the interim, oh, yeah. you know, and you start inter intermingling the presenters. We already know who it would be. It's the old Canadian reptile girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah but she'd have to wear the beard 100% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting Yeah. She could kind of phase it out over time. I think, I think if you did it yeah. right, people would never even notice. Like... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be, be one of those situations where like, you know, she's, she's, com we just a little bit at a time transition her back to being herself. Yeah. Okay. And it wouldn't be till you go back and watch an old video and you'd be like, <laughs> how did I never notice how much Clint has changed? <laughs> He's changed a lot. Maybe we should start implementing her now just, just to get the uh, transition going. I really don't think it'd be necessary. Okay. I think, I think it'd be so back. seamless as yeah. long as you do should the beard. Be transitioning you to her? You've just got to, all you've got to do is get her to kick a few of those Canadian pronunciations. Yeah, boot. Yeah, come on. <laughs>